Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. I've drawn a problem here where we have our typical force around a pulley pulling up a mass. Very simple, something we've done plenty of times before. However, in this situation, I've given the pulley a mass. Thus far in all of our dynamic studies, we've looked at pulleys without mass. I'd like to give the pulley some mass and see how this affects our solutions. Before moving forward, you need to have a good understanding of our capstan equation, which is uh, force 1 over force 2 equals e to the mu theta. You have to have a basic understanding of angular momentum. And finally, you need to have a good understanding of pulleys. That said, let's try and figure this thing out. First, we'll draw our free body diagram. I know that I'm going to, and I'm going to basically cut it in red right around the pulley. So um, I have my pulley with some wire here, and the rope is going to go right here. And my applied force will look like this. We'll say some tension. We're probably not going to, we're not going to even look at that. I have an applied force going down in this direction. And I have an unknown force. Uh, we'll make it in orange. I have an unknown force here. We'll say it's the force of the box. Why don't we know force B? Well, we know that we're going to cause the pulley to move. The pulley has mass, which means that there has to be some net moment. If force A and force B are equal, there's no net moment and the pulley can't move. Another way to see it is we pull on one end of the rope at force A. It has a certain tension. Some of that tension as the rope goes around the pulley is used in the force of friction to help pull the pulley to apply some sort of moment. By the time we get to the other side of the rope, we've lost some of that tension, but we don't yet know how much. Lest you be tempted to use the capstan equation, the capstan equation identifies the maximum ratio between the high tension and the low tension not necessarily the actual forces in the problem. And then secondly, I want to draw the free body diagram for our box. We have a um, force of gravity going down, and then we have, we'll say, the force of the box or the tension in this rope going up. Our difficulty is we know force A, but we do not yet know force B. So we make an observation. We can use our conservation of angular momentum, the sum of the moments, and we'll say this is 0.0 right here, about 0.0 is equal to the change in angular momentum, about 0.0. Firstly, what is the sum of the moments? That's simply going to be moment A plus moment B. Next, the moment at A is negative R FA plus RFB. And instead of dealing with angular acceleration, let's convert that into um, the acceleration of a point at the edge. So that's A over R. Solving for F of B, we get this equation. And from our second free body diagram, we see that the force of B minus the force of G is going to equal the mass times the acceleration of the body. So we solve that for force of B, and we get mass times acceleration plus mg. We can combine these to solve for acceleration. It would look something like this. So hopefully you ended up with something that looks like this as well. Well, does this make sense? The first thing we know is let's pretend it's a massless pulley. If we tend, pretend it's a massless pulley, this I term, it goes to zero which means our acceleration is mg minus fa all over minus m, and we've also simplified out that those r squared. Does that make sense? Yeah, that agrees with what we would expect to see. The second question is what if the pulley is enormous, and or at least has an enormous moment of inertia? It doesn't want to move. Now, if that, that's the case, we would expect that the acceleration would greatly decrease because 
Now that pulley doesn't want to move, so so much more of that force is being used to get the pulley rotating. And in fact, we would see that as I becomes big. We have a big denominator. That would mean the acceleration would get really, really small. So we're applying the same force, but yet we're getting a smaller acceleration. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at our original problem. If we see it from an energy perspective, we're applying some force over some distance. So we're doing some work in red, all right? And for that work, for the price of that work, we get some potential energy, and we'll probably also get some kinetic energy out of the box. That's normal. But in addition, we have the same amount of work now but we also get some additional energy in the form of rotational energy. So kinetic energy of the pulley because if the pulley has an, a moment of inertia, it now has energy. So we can see that some of the work that we used to use to just move this box is now also accelerating this pulley. Now at the beginning of our problem, I said that you need to know the capstan equation and yet we haven't used it we need to verify that there is not any slipping. So because the um, pulley has a moment of inertia, it doesn't want to spin as maybe as fast as you want it to spin, and so the rope may, may slip on the pulley. The capstan equation tells us the maximum ratio between the high tension and the low tension going around the pulley. So we find E mu theta, and in this case, of course, theta is pi. This gives us the maximum relationship between force high and force low. So in other words, let's say we found out what force of A was. We know that FA over FB is it greater than E to the mu theta. If it is, we have something that slips. If it doesn't, or if it's lower than E to the mu theta, then we know it doesn't slip. This can also be used to identify the maximum amount of, say, action or force or mass that we can use before the rope starts to slip. So in summary, we, when we're dealing with pulleys that have mass, we identify what the um, moment of inertia is. We set up our free body diagrams. We create our two equations, one, two. We combine them to solve, say, for the acceleration or whatever we need to do. Finally, we often need to check for slipping or at least use the capstan equation. I hope this gives you a fundamental feel for pulleys with mass or moment of inertia as well as giving you a feel of how the system changes when we introduce this variable. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you in our next module.